Hi, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited for this video. I wasn't planning on, on filming today, but these samples came in and I just have to, um, I have to test them out and I'm so excited. So this is from the brand Ofori and they are out of um, Malaysia. So this is a niche brand from Malaysia and I can't remember where I first heard about it, but I know I did hear from Perfumes the Guide, which I love. This is one of my favorite um, books about perfume. I only have two books about perfume and they're both by Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez. They are reviewers and they write very witty, funny, interesting, sometimes harsh, sometimes glowing reviews of perfumes. So this is their 2018 book and then there's one from 2008. I think I have both of them. And if you're into perfume, I highly recommend these. They're really fun reads. This one is much more niche focused than the 2008 guide. Um, the 2008 guide probably has a lot more designer fragrances in it than this one. So I might have heard about this brand through this book because I, I do kind of just geek out with this book sometimes. So, um, so before I jump into that, I want to share a little bit about my experience with ordering these samples. So I, when I decided I wanted to sample Ofori, I went on their website and ordered the samples. Um, I ordered four of them. They're one milliliter samples and they were around $6 a piece. And I can't remember what I paid for shipping, but it took six weeks exactly to arrive to me from Malaysia to the US. And because I ordered them on Thanksgiving and then I received them on January 9th. So, and this is what it looks like. I just took it out of the little, little plastic packaging. It was very nicely wrapped in really protective bubble wrap, which is really great. Um, so it comes in this little folder which is very simple and it has a, um, looks like a coupon. Um, I'm gonna have to get my reading glasses. At least I did bring them this time. So I'm sorry for all my awkward pauses, but um, okay. So it's a coupon for, it doesn't actually say, it must be 10% off valid until the end of February. So we'll see. I don't know. It's, I can't remember the prices, but I am going to probably put the bottles in the car, not in the cards, but on the screen because they have such beautiful bottles. So I am going to have to take those off for Grantica and post them here because like I said, they're just gorgeous. So um, there's a very long review on, um, in this Perfumes the Guidebook about Miyako, um, excuse me, Miyako. And that got five stars from Luca Turin and Tanya Sanchez in this book, which is really, really good. Um, that's the top score you can get. Um, they have a very long article about Miyako, uh, which I won't, I don't wanna read the whole article, but I wanna take some snippets. Um, Uh, okay. Miyako is primarily a superb osmanthus, a material I first fell in love with when I first encountered it in Shiseido's Nombre Noir, 1982. Osmanthus spans a wide range of smell characters, ranging from apricots to leather. Like Narcissus, it is almost a perfume all by itself. This, perhaps counterintuitively, is not particularly helpful in fragrance composition because, because other notes in the mix tend to obscure the message as if the mind could figure out which parts came in one piece and what was added. The brilliance of Miyako is that it manages to extend Osmanthus at both ends. Like a great sauterne, it balances tremendous weight and sweetness with fierce acidity up top, likely the yuzu listed among the materials. Nombre Noir did a similar thing using powerful tangy rosy damascones. In the middle and bottom, some woody notes, including a sandalwood described by Tanya as huge, not so to me, and a wonderful warm note of candied peanuts. Um, all of the above is mere incidental falderal, which in no way accounts for the uncanny emotion of Miyako. For some mysterious reason, I recomposed all the cheerful citrus, apricots, peanuts, wood, 
and leather into a tragic tableau and perceived it as a luscious radiant rose surrounded by a dour airless almost musty note of underground spaces this is one of the most affecting accords i've ever smelled an orphic descent into the underworld conveyed without words or music it is simply astounding that a self-taught perfumer would not only find this tristan chord of perfumery but also be able to write the rest of the score. Unlike so many artisan fragrances that are full of charm, but sadly fugacious, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. This one carries on majestically expanding at first into a rutilant tutti and ending mezzo forte on woods. There had been so far only one co among my all time favorites. The one composed by Jacques Guerlain in 1919. This makes two, Luca Turin. So, I see I have some words to look up because <laughs> um, I they use very, very cool vocabulary. And so that's part of the reason I love the book is I always have some words to look up and um, dog time. And this is probably a good time to pause while I'm fussing with this package. OK, so I think the barking has subsided. Maybe not. I got the package open. So this, these are the four samples I ordered. They're only one milliliter. So they're just tiny little amounts, probably only good for one true application, but I am going to sample them here and now. Woo! I'm so excited. <laughs> Not as excited as other creatures in this house. Okay, so I have Miyako here and I'm very excited to take the first spray. I'm gonna spray it right on me. Maybe. Very powerful. Okay, so the notes in this lovely are apricot, yuzu, peach, osmanthus, green tea, leather, jasmine, hinoki wood, cedar, sandalwood, patchouli, musk, katsura leaf. I, wow. I do get what Luca Turin was talking about with the that bright citrus fruit combined with that musty that mustiness. It's really unique. I can't see myself ordering a bottle of this unless the dry down is vastly different and um and really changes it's probably not going to be my taste but it's interesting and obviously I can see why a perfume critic that has sampled thousands and thousands of different fragrances would find this really interesting and unique and beautiful it definitely has a beauty and it kind of reminds me of being in a museum or something that mustiness I don't know um yeah, so that's Miyako. Um, the next one I'm gonna try is called Bing Ma Young. And these are all marketed as unisex, by the way. So this has, and these all have really interesting stories too, which I I probably won't read them, but you can go on Fragrantica and read the, um, the stories of each of these perfumes because they are really cool. So this, uh, Bing Ma Yang has mandarin orange, Chinese peony, spices, vetiver, clay, leather, sandalwood, orris root, civet, and musk. And so in this write-up, they talk about the um, terracotta warriors, I think they're called. Um, and that I think they are kind of, this perfume is kind of inspired by the those. very unique. I definitely get those florals. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's definitely giving me mature. Um, I'm getting the peony. I've never, I've, I don't know if I've ever smelled anything that has a clay note. I don't know what, I'm trying to think about what clay smells like. Um, it's very pretty. It's, um, it is unique. I can't say that I've smelled anything like this before. And I love the composition. When I think about oranges, flowers, spices, vetiver, clay, leather, sandalwood, forest roots, civet, and musk. 
um, it's interesting. Uh, it does sort of remind me somehow of a French, like an old French perfume, even though I know that's not the inspiration behind this at all. But it gives me that classy sort of Shalimar vibe somehow, even though it doesn't really smell like Shalimar, but it's giving me that sort of classy, mature woman. Anyway, very cool. Um, really excited to be trying these. The next one I have is called L'Anima Della Rosa. And this is inspired by a Tennyson poem. It's got Earl Grey tea, yellow narcissus, red rose, bright, white rose, lily, honeysuckle, angels, trumpet, passion flower, acacia, spices, wood, woody notes, moss, musk, and ambergris. And I'm trying to figure out where this is gonna go on me because I'm out of arm space and I'm gonna have to grab my paper and do it that way. I got my hand instead, but that's okay. Ooh, definitely floral. Definitely getting that. Ooh, pretty. Um, that narcissus, rose, lily, honeysuckle, all those flowers, really strong. Giving me a little bit of an angel vibe, but a lot of things do, I guess. Maybe I'm a little obsessed with angel, but angel's just so powerful and iconic. This is definitely more floral than angel, but very powerful and beautiful. Um, I think this, I, I think I like this one the best so far of the three I've tried. Um, yeah, this um, Bing Ma Young is drying down much more subdued, obviously, and oops, Miyako, Miyako still has that mustiness. So um, I don't think that's giving me my cup of tea on a day-to-day -day basis or something that I would want a full bottle of. So far, I'm really, really digging this um, L'Anima Della Rosa, beautiful, um, inspired by the Tennyson poem. And the last one I have is Ryukyu, um, a unique olfactory indulgence inspired by the mesmerizing history and heritage, as well as the diverse geographical features of Okinawa, once known as the Ryukyu Kingdom. Um, and I, I couldn't find the notes. So I don't know officially what the notes are for this one. Um, it was not listed on Fragrantica. I could probably find it on the Ofori website, but I haven't looked yet. So, okay, I gotta get this one away from this hand. Hmm. I think it's gardenia. I might be getting gardenia almost a sharp, there's almost a sharp floral in here that I'm not really recognizing. Um, there's some notes in here that I'm not able to identify right off the bat, but it's pretty. Um, a little more mature. Um, I think that uh, um, Anima excuse me, Lanima Della Rosa was, was maybe the most youthful of these that I've sampled here, but this one's very pretty. I definitely get some distinctive florals and some other things I can't identify, but pretty. Um, and so that concludes my sampling of Ofori, a niche house from Malaysia. And I am really, really intrigued. I would love to try more. Um, unfortunately, what it looks like they do is they have a specific perfume for a period of time and then they retire it and then they have something new replace it so there were several that were in um the perfumes guide that are no longer available because of the way they cycle through their products and their perfume offerings so um so yeah i think that it's a really cool house and i love to support um independently owned 
niche artisans um, when I can. Um, most of my collection is definitely designer and I that's what I gravitate towards but it's fun to try something different and um, I was really excited to get these so I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, please give it a thumbs up if you like the video and feel free to give it a thumbs down if you didn't like the video. And also I'd be really interested in your suggestions below. What kind of videos are you interested in seeing from me? I'm really open to makeup, skincare, and fragrance videos. So thank you so much for being here today and I'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.